have a very high urbanization rate in Cape Town. It's around about 5% a year. Um, we have a population of about 3.7 million, and 20, about 20% 20 of that population live in informal settlements. And those really are settlements that don't have basic services, electricity, sanitation, water, and it's a growing problem. You can see by the graph, global trend, as predicted by the United Nations, of the rate of urbanization going into the future. So Cape Town has very much looked at World Design Capital as an opportunity to address this challenge, to start looking at it through a different lens, to look at new innovative techniques, to look at design as an opportunity. And we're using World Design Capital really as that platform to start that conversation. The theme for World Design Capital 2014 in Cape Town was or is Live Design, Transform Life. We don't have a rich design history um, such as Torino or Seoul or Helsinki and our bid was very much around the principles of how can we use design to transform ourselves into the future. So the program that um, is currently being presented and happening in Cape Town is very much focused on projects which are looking at how Cape Town from a future perspective uh, can be improved in the, from a social and economic point of view. So a lot of the projects are focusing on the soft side of the city, uh, the social side, social innovation, um, and some very interesting projects. And I'll, I'll speak a little bit later on just about the website that you can go to to really get a better idea of the projects. The challenge in Cape Town that we have we have a very divided city. As Pekka mentioned, we've been voted as the top destination in the world for 2014. And that's very much the image on the left-hand side. It's the mountain, it's the sea, it's the beaches, the wonderful food that we have. But right next door to that, not too far away, is the real challenges that Cape Town has, which is where you find the informal settlements. So in the city administration, working with the mayor and the politicians, We've started a program internal to the administration to help them understand the value that design can bring to try and bridge this divide, to try and work with the very complex challenges that they have. And it's really a, a bit of a sales process. We're having to, um, obviously you can imagine design and public sector aren't necessarily things that go together, specifically in, in South Africa. So we're going through a bit of an internal sales process to try and get city officials and politicians to understand how they can use design in an urban context and try and bridge a complex divide like this. So the first step that we go through is we explain that these aren't complicated issues. These are what we call complex issues. And uh, I'm not sure what it's like in Taipei, but very much in Cape Town, before you start a project, they want to know what the answer is. They want to know what it is, how much it's going to cost, what it's going to look like, what color it's going to be. And from a design perspective, we say to them, we don't know yet. We know what the challenge is. We know what the end result needs to be, but we don't know what the actual object or system is going to be at the end of the day. We talk about a complex system. We talk about problems that are ambiguous, that are ever-changing. There's often conflicting information, information overload. And what we're saying to the politicians and the civil, civil servants and the administration is we need to go through a design process to really understand the problem and to come up with a, an appropriate solution. The traditional techniques that have been used aren't working and there's evidence out there. Look at the informal settlements that we're experiencing. So we call these wicked problems. Uh, wicked problems are ever-changing. If one wanted to visualize a wicked problem, it would look something like that, very complex, lots of interrelations. And you can imagine to the average person working in administration, how am I going to solve a problem embedded somewhere in, in a system like this? Where do I start? So as part of World Design Capital, we've got a program where we're saying there's no silver bullet, there's no single answer. We've really got to start thinking differently. We created these problems to start with, and now we have to start thinking in a different way to change them. And um, I refer to this quote a lot of the times to the city administration to get them to realize that we're going through a change of thinking here and that it's not business as usual. 
And well-designed capital is not about doing things the same way. It's an opportunity to experiment. It's an opportunity to do different things. It's an opportunity to bring in a new way of thinking to really try and tackle the ever-growing urban challenges that we have. We nail straight onto the mast the fact that design is a key element in this, and specifically uh, what we call term design-led thinking or design thinking. I think to most people, design is about the beautiful objects, and what we're saying inside the city is that it's not about the beautiful objects. It's about a process. It's about a thinking process. It's about the process behind getting to these sort of solutions. And um, we term it design thinking. And what we're finding within the city administration is that a process which requires an element of research and analysis, and then prototyping and testing and reflection, is something that's very new to the organization. They don't generally do the proper research. They don't experiment. They come up with an idea and they implement it. And we're trying to change that mindset. And we're finding that in a city administration, you come up against the challenges of procurement and finance and um, the legal. And it's, it's those are the systems that we are ultimately trying to change within the organization. So we can start procuring good design. We can start creating platforms where we can solicit ideas from the community and build a city which is more inclusive. What we do within the city is to try and distill it into a language which they understand. So very much part of the World Design Capital program within the administration is about unpacking this design thinking. And we, we really talk about three main aspects. The need for a creative thinking process, that we need to create systems and processes in the administration, in the city, that allow us to think creatively, to be more collaborative internally across the organization, as well as collaborate with communities, collaborate with business, collaborate with NGOs, and work together. So these are all very new concepts in trying to solve um, key urban issues. And then probably the most important, which I think is something which I was quite surprised with when I, when I joined the uh, city administration, was to put the user at the center of the thinking. And uh, we've noticed that the city doesn't do that. They don't think of the end user like a designer will. So it's about making sure that every decision we make, that that end user is at the center of, think of the thinking. So within World Design Capital, we have a, a program. We follow in a very similar uh, process to Helsinki. We have about 450 projects which have been showcased throughout the year. But within the city administration, we have some very focused public sector projects, which is really about trying to get the city to think differently in the way that it's developing its landscape going forward. And one of those is to engage with all the 111 wards of, of Cape Town. Um, for those that managed to pick up one of these brochures at the beginning, there's a map in here which um, illustrates all the 111 wards of the city. Yeah, for those that have it, it's basically this, this map of Cape Town. And the mayor wanted us as part of the city administration to go into every single ward and do a co-design workshop with the citizens to use a, create a platform where citizens could now engage with government and government could engage with citizens using design and co-design tools as, as the platform. So we're currently running a series of workshops where we invite citizens from the, from the area they come with the problem statement. So we don't, from, from a city perspective, we don't assume what the problem is. We go out there and ask them, you bring the problem statement to us. We provide professional designers to help facilitate the process. We invite students and NGOs. And we also invite uh, representatives from the city administration to also be part of that. And we spend a full day co-designing a solution where everybody in the room is the designer. The designers become the facilitators of the process, but the citizens become the designers. And together we build ideas and, and possible solutions, which the city administration can then take into its various departments to implement. We're running a series of these workshops throughout 2014 with, um, throughout the entire um, region of Cape Town. I think what's important for us is using World Design Capital as a platform, as a catalyst, as a springboard. Uh, to start getting people to realize the value of design. So for us, it's all about the legacy. It's all about what happens after 2014 and how do we continue the conversation. 
I urge you to go to the website as well. The details are on the right hand side. And also if you've got a, one of those yellow brochures, it'll give you a bit of an indication more of, of the other programs and projects that are happening throughout Cape Town. And uh, if you do have an opportunity to come this year, please do. Um, I'm looking forward to your 2016 um, and hope to be coming back to Taipei many more times. Cheers,